So number lesson one, number 12, it says a car starts at rest. That's going to be important because that means VI is going to be zero. Accelerates to a speed V. How much more energy will it take for the car to start at speed V and accelerate to a speed 3V? I'm going to do this algebraically. At the same time, Colin, I would have no problem if you said, I'm going to let V be 5 and 3V be 15, or I'm going to let V be 4 and 3V be 12, or if you just decided to plug in numbers. But I think I can do this one algebraically, and I think you folks can follow it. So I'm going to say, well, work equals force times, di they didn't give me a force. You know what? I see the fact that they gave me speeds, Vs. I'm going to start tackling this as work equals the change in kinetic plus the change in potential. Except I don't think there's a hill here at all. So I really think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to look at uh, the first work and I'm going to look at the second work. The first work, we start at rest and we accelerate to a speed V. So I think we're going to end up with a KE final minus a KE initial. We're going to end up with a half MV squared is our final V. And our initial here is 0. You OK with that? In our second one, our final speed And our initial speed is that okay so far? Really, what I think I'm going to get is a half m nine v squared. I know normally I would write the nine in front, but I'm just putting it next to the v so you can see the difference. Minus a half m one v squared, and those are like terms. What is a half m9 v squared minus a half m1 v squared? I think a half m8 v squared. And I think the difference between this expression and this expression is Sesame Street is brought to you today by the number 8. You know what? It takes 8 times more energy to go from v to 3v <coughs> than it does to go from 0 to V. You can also, it's interesting to run this if you just double your speed. So to go from 0 to 5, say, and then to go from 5 to 10. Uh, to go from 5 to 10 weeks takes way more energy. Quinn, do you ride your bike ever? Do you ride a bike at all? Yes. Have you ridden a bike before? I don't know if you've ever noticed, but to get going isn't hard. But once you're going at a speed, to increase your speed takes way, 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 way more energy. Uh, there's why, right there. It's because of that squared. It's because of that squared. <laughs> no, never noticed? OK. My, go ride your bike once in a while. OK. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Lesson three, number one. Did I assign any questions from lesson three? Maybe I did. I said one to four. OK. <coughs> OK. Well, the fact that we're at a constant speed <coughs> says this. Uh, the F applied and the F friction must be identical in my free body diagram. OK. So how much work does the person do? The person does 125 joules. Now, work is also the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. You OK with that? Uh, did this object change its height at all? Nope. Does this object change its speed at all? Nope. So here's my question. Uh, where did the work, where did the energy go? It turns out friction did the same amount of work but negative. It bled off all of the energy that this person was adding to the mass. Otherwise, this mass would have to have been picking up speed because it would have been gaining kinetic energy. So that's how I would answer it actually without actually doing some numbers. I could crunch the numbers too, but there I would say I think that whole constant speed notion means this object is neither gaining nor losing energy. But wait, the person is adding energy. The energy's got to go somewhere. 
Where? Uh, oh, must have gone into heat. Friction, work done by friction. Is that okay? Yeah. Any others? Yeah. Uh, what, le what, this, this one here? Yeah. Uh, haven't done efficiency yet. That's going to be today's lesson. And I didn't realize that there was an efficiency question in there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have assigned number two yet. It'll be part of today's homework. Good question, though. Very efficient of you. <laughs> Sorry. Any others besides 2B or not 2B? Because that's not the question. You're on a roll, Mr. Oh, shut up. OK. So picking up where we left off, if you would be so kind, actually to turn back to where it says efficiency. So this is lesson three, Lewis Devon. I did part of lesson three, but I didn't finish it. Is that a question from the homework, or you don't have a copy? My children who were away last day, heck, my children who were here last day, last day we defined power. We define power is how fast you're doing work. And really, anytime I say how fast or the rate at which you're doing work, what I really mean is you're going to divide it by time. Power is work over time. If you think you're getting tired doing something, it's not because you're doing work. It's because you're generating power. It's the difference, uh, Jake, if you walk up a hill really slowly or if you sprint up that hill, you've done the same amount of work because your change in potential energy was the same. It's just that if you sprint up that hill, you've done the work faster. That's why you're tired. Tiredness is from power. Hey, folks, power is measured in what? <coughs> watts. Yes, there's my joke for this unit as well. So power is measured in watts. Named after, well, James Watt. I told you he's overrated. I went on my little rant. But one watt is one joule per second. Power is also a scalar. Power is also a scalar. We also said that if you broke work down into force times distance, because power is work over time, we noticed you had a distance over a time. Another constant, remember Jake, I just went over one with constant speed with you. Also, if you see a power question and they're talking about constant speed, you can realize that distance over time is V average or constant speed. If they give you a force, you can also get the power. Let's talk about efficiency. Efficiency means how much bang we get for the buck. Uh, it really is a, a ratio, a fraction, a percentage of how much energy you get out compared to how much energy you put in, or how much work you get out compared to how much work you put in, or how much power you get out compared to how much power you put in. It's usually expressed as a percentage. Uh, I didn't know this until I started teaching Physics 12. Uh, the Greek letter eta is a symbol for efficiency. I often will just for efficiency write EFF, efficiency. But the Greek letter eta, it's like a lowercase n with a droopy tail. <coughs> Looks kind of like that. Okay. So how is efficiency defined? Well, efficiency is uh, energy out divided by energy in. Or power out divided by power in or work out divided by work in and then we'll often go times 100 to make it from a decimal into a percentage now this formula is not on your formula sheet by the way, you'll notice this unit, a lot of the equations I've been giving you don't show up on your formula sheet. The law of conservation of energy, G, 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 is not on your formula sheet. The only equation that's on your formula sheet for this unit is uh, work equals force times distance, I think. That's it. Uh, work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic, not on your formula sheet. Work equals the area under a force versus distance graph, not on your formula sheet. I don't remember this equation. Draw a little line. Really, you... Here's what I remember. Efficiency is the smaller number divided by the bigger number. Because, Carolyn, in our universe, things are not more than 100% efficient. Now, if you do actually invent something that's 100, more than 100% efficient, and you can prove it, uh, Jose, you'll in about five years, be able to buy Bill Gates. 
because you will have solved the world's energy crisis. They will name units after you. There will be a unit called the Jose. It'll probably be an energy unit of some type. But I'm telling you, if you're doing a question and you try and tell me that your answer is more than 100% efficient, you're wrong. Sorry. You're not getting a Nobel Prize. Sorry. Now, why do I say that? I have a specific question in my mind, preview of coming attractions, where in front of the amount of energy that you're getting out, the word in just happens to appear because of the grammar. And in front of the amount of energy that you're putting in, the word out just happens to appear because of the grammar of the sentence. And so every year I have people telling me, oh, this object is 138% efficient. It's not. It's not. Sadly, our universe is one that tends towards entropy. And that means energy tends to dissipate. We lose energy. We're never 100% efficient or even close. <coughs> So I wrote here, note, energy is always less than 100% efficient. Or sorry, efficiency is always less than 100%. Unless you plan on winning a Nobel Prize. By the way, if you do win a Nobel Prize, if you do create the fancy word is a machine that, that is greater than unity, unity one, so one as a percent is 100%. Uh, if you can create an, something that has an efficiency of more than one, more than 100%, can you invite me to your ceremony? Remember your physics teacher. Um, a typical household light bulb transforms energy at a rate of 60 watts. 60 watt bulb. Most of the electrical energy, unfortunately, is transformed into heat instead of light. If you've ever touched a light bulb after it's been on, you may have noticed, owie, 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 it burns. In fact, when I was a child, I don't know if they still make it, but when I was a child, there was a toy that you could buy called an Easy Bake Oven, which baked purely with a light bulb. Oh, got an interrupter coming in. So, in a standard light bulb, Lewis, about 57 watts of the, energy, of the power go to heat, and only about 3 watts go to light. Some well-meaning politicians read this, and they said, oh, well then the obvious solution, because that's wasted energy, is to ban incandescent light bulbs. But they didn't do the science right. Lewis, I gotta go on a bit of a rant here, okay? So politicians saw this, they said, oh, incandescent bulbs are only about 5% efficient, which by the way is true. And so you're finding they're, they're, they're getting banned from stores. They're having those little uh, fluorocarbon, those spirally ones. But there's a, there's a problem, Rob. Uh, they didn't think about the science the whole way. That heat is not wasted energy. Your house's heating bill is lower by exactly the same amount as the heat those lights give off. In the winter, in particular, your light bulbs help heat your house. It's not wasted energy. I agree it's not a good use of energy, but it's not like we've wasted energy. Well, Mr. Duick, what about in the summertime? In the summertime, I don't want to heat up my house. That would be wasted energy. You know, Rob, that's true. That's true. Rob, what country do we live in? Northern Hemisphere? Yeah. Fairly far north? Yeah. Uh, in the summertime, do our days get longer or shorter? Considerably longer? Yeah. In the summertime, do we use light bulbs more or less? Far less. So I'm not sure the heat argument in the summer is all that. Okay, fair enough. There's some. Um, you know what, Mr. Duick? What, Ty? Outdoors. You know, if the bulbs are outdoors, then the heat is wasted. Well, that's true. You guys might notice those little spirally ones don't do well outdoors. They don't like moisture at all. They don't do well outdoors. And those little spirally fluorescent bulbs, uh, they're really tough to dispose of. In fact, yesterday I took my remaining ones to the recycle de depot. You can't throw them in the garbage. They contain mercury. By the way, don't throw them in the garbage. They contain mercury. Please dispose of them properly because right now and probably for the foreseeable future, we have no technology to remove mercury from groundwater and oceans and seafood and fish. Every one of you has a far higher level of mercury in your body than anyone living about 80 years ago. And mercury does bad stuff. So I, I, I understand the politicians wanted to be well-meaning. I'm just not so sure they thought it through. Uh, what is the future of bulbs if it's not fluorescent? 
LEDs. I actually have replaced in my, where I live. I'm slowly, they're expensive still, but I'm slowly replacing mine with LEDs because the last years, perhaps deca decades maybe, but years, uh, they're very efficient. They give off very little heat. Oh, and they also work outside, okay. Um, a kettle might transform electrical energy into heat at the rate of 1500 watts. The more heat an object moves around, the more watts that appliance will use. The two biggest wattages in your houses, uh, your stove and your dryer. In fact, if you pull both of them off the wall, you'll even notice both of those are plugged into special plugs, different plugs from all the rest. They have their own circuit and they have 220 volt plugs rather than 110 volt plugs. Uh, European students, you guys do power totally differently. So what I just said, I don't believe applies in Europe because you've got the weird plugs and all that stuff too. No, we have the weird plugs. Okay, fair enough. So what can we do? Example three, a 250 kilogram mass is lifted at a constant speed. Jake, you know what? After your question, I bet you I would underline constant speed, yes? Of two meters per second for a distance of 12.5 meters. A, find the work. B, find the required power. C, if the motor is used, okay. Jake, what does A want me to find? Well, my first thought is maybe, are we lifting something? Yeah. You know what? Th that, this'll work. This'll work. No pun intended. Uh, this is gonna be uh, M, G, H. Now, Tice back there is saying, Mr. Duick, isn't there also some kinetic energy? But I said work is the change in kinetic energy. If our speed is constant, is our kinetic energy changing at all? Nice job. Good catch. Was that what you were looking at? Because I saw your eye. Did I read you right? No? Okay. 250 times 9.8 times 12.5 are the force and the distance in the same direction. Yeah, it, uh, that distance is a height. How many joules of work do we do? You get 30,625. I'll go 3.06 times 10 to the times 10 to the fourth joules b find the required power well power is work over time this is the second equation you the only two equations you guys have in this unit are work equals force times distance uh, potential energy equals mgh kinetic energy equals a half mv squared power equals work over time it's just then using them all Do you guys see a time in this question anywhere? I don't. Force times distance, that's work over time. Oh, this is that trick that I showed you. Uh, what's distance over time? Meters per second. What's that called in meters per second, a measure of speed or velocity? So you know what, I can go force times speed, which is going to be, which force? Gravity. Which speed? Two. It's going to be 250 times 9.8 times two. Wait a minute, I should be able to do this in my head. Uh, 4,900? Yeah? It's a two times table. I should be able to do a two times table in my head. 4,900 watt. Mm hmm. C. If the motor is using 10,000 kilowatts of electrical energy, find its efficiency. Well, efficiency is going to be. Smaller number divided by the bigger number. Except I got a bit of a problem here. 
This is, in, oh no, no, this will work, this will work, this will work. This is in watts, this is in watts. So we're getting out, we're getting out 4,900 watts of power. And we're putting in, by the way, what's a kilowatt? How many watts? So 10 kilowatts. 10,000. The only thing with this, uh, you want to make sure, Mac, that your units match. Don't put joules and watts in the same question. Joules over joules, watts over watts. And then to make it a percentage, I'm going to multiply by 100 and add a percent. So it's going to be, and I know I could do this one in my head, but 4,900 divided by 10,000 and then times 100%. Oh, times 100%. This machine is 49% efficient. Where's the rest of the energy going? Heat, sound, mostly heat, lots of heat, heat, friction. Okay. We did example four, we did example five. All right. Example six. A lawnmower question. <coughs> A person pulls on a tw 20 kilogram lawnmower with a force of 25 newtons and moves the mower four meters. You know what? I have a feeling I better draw this one. There's my picture. What are the forces acting on this lawnmower? Get the obvious one. What else? Well, I always, if there's a yucky, slanty force, I tend to put it there just to remind me. So here is my F applied, 25 newtons. What else is this mass sinking into the ground? Is it flying into the air? So it's going to be a normal force. Am I going to draw the normal force bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity here? Smaller. Does this question mention friction? Yep. There you go. There's my free body diagram, but now I'm going to, well, I got a slanty. What should I do with that slanty? And I typically call this Fx and Fy. OK. Okay. Jose, what does A want me to find? Um, you know what? I got a bunch of definitions of work. Uh, is there a graph in this question? Will I be using the area under a force versus distance graph? Say no. Um, I could go change. You know what? The fact that I see a distance and a bunch of forces, I think I'm going to use force times distance. Which force? Nope. You know how I know? What direction is this object moving? Which applied is not pointing to the right. My force and my distance have to be in the same direction. Which one did you really mean to say? Not the applied force, but normal force is that way. Distance is that way. That's zero work, I can guarantee you. Which one is in the same direction as the direction that you're moving? Help me out, Rob. Okay. FX. Fx, Fx, yes? So let's do this, folks. Uh, here's my angle theta. Uh, I think I'm going to have cosine of 15 equals Fx over F applied. Oh! This takes us back to the very first lesson. We actually did say if you were pulling up on something, the generic definition of work was force times distance cosine of theta. And then we looked at when theta was 0 degrees, cosine of theta was 1, and you got force times distance. When theta was 90 degrees, like in a normal force, uh, cosine of theta was 0, and you got no work. And this explained the piggyback demonstration. But here, it's going to be, what's the applied force, Jose? How big? What's the distance? 4.5.
cosine of 15. How much work did this person do? <coughs> Hundred and nine? Hundred and eight point six six. I'll go hundred and nine joules. <gasps> Whose phone was that? Really? You're not gonna point them out? You don't want your Timbits? Came from back there somewhere. Cade's looking a little nervous. Came from that way? Came from in here somewhere? Hmm. Help me out, we'll root it out because it's probably going to beep again if it's an iPhone, which it sounded like, and they don't read their text, it's going to beep again. So be ready to triangulate. Okay? Let's keep going. Cade, what's B want me to find? I think the work done by friction is going to be the force of friction times distance. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but ugh. look, 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 look. I know a bunch of forces pointing up and a force pointing down. Ugh. Ugh. Well, let's see if we can do this in one fell swoop. So let, we can certainly go mu times the normal force times distance. Yes? What's mu? I don't know what's mu with you. Uh, point 0.1? In there, I'm going to put an expression for the normal force. Jake, which two forces are pointing straight up? I, should, I was too slow. When you said y, I, did you say fy or just y? Oh. If you'd said why, I was going to say, because I asked you to. Anyway, okay. Yeah, FY and FN, which force is pointing down? So everything up has to cancel out everything down. So over here, I'm going to say this. FN and FY have to cancel out MG. Yes? How would I get the FN by itself? Is that okay so far? F Y is it sine? It is. It is. So I can go like this. Point one. M G minus uh, twenty five twenty twenty five sine theta times D. This is going to take two lines. The work done by friction is going to be 0.1 bracket mass 20 times 9.8. I'm going to use timeses instead of brackets because there's so many brackets here I'm going to lose track of stuff. Minus 25 sine. I'll put a bracket for around the angle. times, what was D? 4.5. That might even be how I'll type it. 0.1 bracket, 20 times 9.8 minus 25 sine 15 times 4.5. And I don't think we quite get the right answer. I get 85.3, but what did I say the answer was? <coughs> Why did I say negative? What direction, Jose, is this thing moving? To the? What direction is friction acting? To the? So we said that really means there's an angle of 100. You know what? We just said, we'll say you're losing energy. This is how much you're losing to heat. Uh, minus. 85.3, and this is energy at joules. C, the time. Boy, I'm not going to be able to fit this in very easy. I didn't realize. I thought I'd left more room. <coughs> 
we're running out of room, but it seems to me, do we know the applied force forwards? Yes. Do we know the friction force backwards? Yes. We would go like this. Fx forwards minus friction backwards equals ma. You okay with that so far? Find A. I don't have room to do all this. D equals 4.5. Can you see where I'm going with this now? Uh, I think we'll assume we're starting at rest, and I'll change that next year and add that to the question. And you can find G. That should get you there. Okay. I'm more interested in 7 and 8, because now we're going to be using power and stuff. Person pushes with pushes, pushes, okay, pushes down with 75 newtons on a lawnmower, which has, you know what, I better draw this. What are the forces acting on this lawnmower? Get the obvious one. Really? What are the forces acting on this lawnmower? Get the obvious one! Gravity! Thank you. MG. What else? Well, the person is pushing down. I guess I, I don't like arrows coming in, but I, I guess I'll do that. I was, gonna, I was thinking about drawing it this way, but that was going to also be yucky. So, okay, pushing down. And here is my F applied. What else? There's going to be a normal force because this thing isn't sinking into the ground or flying into the air. Looking at this, will the normal force be bigger, smaller, or the same size as gravity? Considerably bigger. So I'll exaggerate it just so I don't make that mistake. Friction? Ugh, okay. Friction is going to be, I guess, that way. This is going to be a bit of a yucky diagram because I got the one force with angles. I am going to break it into components. There's Fy. There's Fx. I don't like having two forces in the same line pointing towards each other, but I've tried to make it clear, I hope. Kind of. There's also a two-word phrase that I would probably underline, this one here. Okay, here we go. Devin, what's A asking me to find? Just read it to me. Uh, rate at which heat energy is generated. So here's my question. What's this question really asking me to find? What the heck is the rate at which energy is generated? Uh, how much friction? Joules per second, you said. You're partly right, but joules per sec... What do I measure in, what is joules per second? What? What is joules per second? Real, this is asking me to find, I think, power from friction. How many watts of power go into friction? Okay, well, power is work over time. I guess this is gonna be the work done by friction over time, yes? which is going to be force of friction times distance over time. This would be my starting point. Then I would go look and I would say, hey, did they give me a distance somewhere in this equation, please? Otherwise, I'm going to say it could also be the area under a graph or the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Did they give me a distance in this question? OK, I'm going to go with this. Can I find the force of friction? Yes, I can. Did they give me a time? Hmm. 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 Can I figure out a time? You know, maybe if I get the acceleration, use VI equals, you know what? 
I think maybe if I do this right here, I can probably get the time. Okay, this is going to be, a, no pun intended, a lot of work. Although, what a great pun. Okay. All right, I'm going to temporarily tuck this aside for a second. I think this one is complicated enough that as much as I love to do things algebraically, I'm actually probably going to solve for friction, write it down to like five, six decimal places, some extra sig figs. I'm going to try and find time, write that down to five or six decimal places, and then come back. So let's find friction. Friction is, oh, my pen stopped working. Good gosh, I just replaced the battery. Uh, all right, folks, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force and ugh. Well, okay. I think it's going to be mu. I think this time the normal force is gravity plus Fy, Jake. Yes? Bigger as opposed to gravity minus Fy. Okay. Did I say Fy? Really? Okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. It's going to be mu 0.21 bracket m. Oh, no, hang on. Oh, there it is. 25 times 9.8 plus 75 <coughs> sine 20. The 20 degree angle is right there. You get a friction force of 56 point, and I'll go 56.8368. Yeah, 53, I'll carry six sig figs. That should keep me safe to three sig figs. 56.8368, 56, 56.8368, 56, and that's a force, it's Newton's. Did I leave you? Ooh, not much room. Okay. Well, now I'd like to find the acceleration. Well, sorry, that's a lie. Tice, what I'd like to find is the time. I can't find the time, but I got VI is at rest. I got a distance. Let's find an acceleration from last year. This is great review of last unit. I, I, I'm not going to say, I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. I'm not saying that. I am saying, hey, I like this question because this is reviewing the entire year in one question. We've got some work. We've got some power. We're bringing some kinematics in from Unit 1. We're doing lawnmowers. This is kind of cool. Um, who's winning? FX. Who's losing? And that equals MA. So the acceleration is going to be fx, of course it is, minus friction. You okay with that, Lewis? All right. Uh, fx, oh, sorry. It's not fx cos theta. It's just f cos theta. It's, it's f applied cos theta, right? Uh, f applied is 70, 75. 75 Cosine theta, 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 20, minus 56.8368. I'm going to use my answer button. All divided by, what was the mass? 25. What are we accelerating at? Minus answer button divided by 25. I get an acceleration of 0 0.545605. Anyone else? Rob's nodding. 0 0.545605. 0 0.545605. This is kind of a nice question. I'm enjoying the challenge here. I really didn't care about the acceleration. Why did I find the acceleration? What do I really want to find? What are we going to spend most of our time finding? You don't say. Okay, uh, VI equals zero, D equals D equals 30. 
I'm looking for an equation that has uh, one of those in it. I think I can use d equals vit plus a half. Actually, no, I can use d equals a half at squared because vi is zero, right? D equals a t squared over two, a half a t squared. V i is zero. <coughs> How would I get the t by itself? <laughs> Times by two, divide by a square root, yeah? So t is going to be the square root of two d over a, and I'll use my answer button. So it's going to be the square root of two times, what was the distance? 30 divided by, haha, ha, answer button, square root. It's going to take about 10.4866 seconds. I'm going to go 10.487. T equals 10.487 seconds. All right. Please, let's hope and see if this works all the way up here. <coughs> Friction. 56.8368, distance 30, <coughs> all over, time 10.487, I hope we get 162 watts, 56.8368 times 30 divided by answer button. I got 163 watts. You know what? With the amount of work we just did, as long as I'm good to two sig figs and close on my third, I think we're fine. And we're not done yet, Mr. D oh. Riley, what does part B want us to find? Honestly, I just stuck that in there as kind of a little icing on the cake, a little cleansing the palate, because I think VF is just going to be VI plus AT. What was VI? Zero. What was, oh, you know what? It's going to be plug and chug. I'm not even going to write the numbers. I'm going to go straight to zero plus uh, point, where was my acceleration? Five, four, five, six, oh, five times 10.487. And please tell me, do I get a 5.72? Which I think what it says up there, yeah? What was the point of that question, Mr. Duick? Uh, to show you, Kate, we have a lot of skills at our disposal. We can take something that looks initially pretty ugly, and if we don't panic, we can use some work, we can use some energy, we can use some power, we can use some forces, we can use some kinematics. Last one, I think. Hey, it is. On a stair climber at the gym, a 75 kilogram person lifts their center of mass up 22 centimeters with each step. You know what? You're not going to get me. That's 0.22 meters. I'll fix that right now. If they take 360 steps in six minutes and their muscles are 18% efficient, then find A, the rate at which pers the person does work, and then B, the rate at which the person uses food energy. So here's the physics of a stair climber. Mac, what's part A asking me to find? Not asking me to find work, it's asking me to find the rate <coughs> at which the person does. What's that a, syn a synonym for? Mac, my friend. Could you read me that little sentence that I've just highlighted right there? No, no, just read it. Can you read it from up? Oh, your back row corner? Yeah. Okay. So, you ready? I'm going to come back. I'm going to ask you this same question. What's this question really asking me to find if it says the rate at which person does work? The person does work. Power. What? Power. So, you know what? Since it wants us to find power, 
How about we go like this? Is that okay? All right. Did they give me a time in this question? Yeah? How much time? So, six minutes, which is uh, six times, six, yeah, 360 seconds if you did it in your head. I'll put that down there. What work are they do? What work are you doing on a stair climber? What force are you doing work against? Well, first of all, I guess it's going to be force times distance. Which force? Someone said it. Let's put a little FG times distance. So it's going to be MG, and it's going to be 360. What distance? Well, what's one step, Mac? What's one step? Read the question, please. What's one step's distance? No shrugging here. You've got to read the question. 0.22. How many steps are they taking in our six minutes? So I think the distance is going to be 0 0.22 times 360. I, by the way, Isaac crunched the numbers nice. This person's doing <laughs> one step per second, which, okay, that's not unreasonable. So conveniently, in this case, yay, the 360s cancel. That's just a fluke because of the numbers. Please don't think that the distance and the time will always cancel. But how much work is this person doing then? Uh, 75 times 9.8 times 0.22. Pardon me? It just ends up being MGH because they're doing, oh, you know why? Because if you're doing one step per second and power is work over time, really we could have simplified this. We could have said, oh, one step per second, the time is one second. It's just going to be MGH. Every second they are losing 162 joules of energy. You with me on that? Mac, you good with that? I'm going to write 161.7 equals 162 and this is power watts. All right, let's do the more interesting one. That's actually not their exercise component because their muscles are not 100% efficient. Hey, when you exercise, what other type of energy do you give off quite substantially? Heat, lots of it. That's why exercise burns more energy than just what you're doing. How much is that? Okay. Well, Addy, what's B asking me to find? When I talk about the rate at which, I think what we're really talking about here is power. Power. Now, the nice thing is, because this is 162 watts per second, I can also say this is 161.7 joules every second. Because this question talked about energy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use energy and energy. You know what? 161.7 joules of energy. You okay with that? So we're going to say this. Efficiency is... It's uh, energy out divided by energy in. It's energy out divided by energy in. What's the energy out in this question? Uh, the stair climbing. What's the energy in? Where do you guys get your energy from? Where do humans get their energy from? Food. This is the. This will help us. We we want to calculate the energy in. That's going to give us energy. And then we'll say, uh, if we divide it by one second, they'll turn it back to power. Okay? Ready, ready, ready? What's the efficiency here? So 0.18.
equals, what are we getting out? 161.7 divided by, what are we putting in? I don't know. Oh, Rob. Is this one fraction equals one fraction? If I put the 0.18 over one, by the way, I decimal, because 18% as a decimal, 0.18, yes. I can't do math with percentages. I always have to redecimalize them. Um, I think we're going to get this then. The energy that this person put in, the amount of food energy that's used is going to be 161.7 divided by 0.18. And I get 898. Uh, watts of joules of energy per second or watts of power because one watt is one joule per second. This person is uh, doing 162 watts of power in the stair climber but far more of that is going into burning off heat. Is that okay? What's your homework? I was going to do what, the finish the unit off. I'm going to finish the unit off next lesson. Next lesson has nothing to do with actually what's on your test anyways. Um, I'm going to do number seven. Um, apparently, I did number eight as a question now that I've looked at it and just noticed it. So I guess I'm not going to be doing number eight. And I've already skipped six. Uh, nine. Ten. Um, blah, 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 blah. 14, 